Howdy everybody, and welcome back to the series. This is part 3. In the last episode, we figured out a basic structure for our configuration, we installed Lazy, and we also set up a nice looking color scheme. This episode is going to be a cleanup episode. I was supposed to also discuss NVIM Treesitter in this episode, however, we're just not going to have enough time. So this is going to be a tiny bit more boring of an episode. We are going to clean up this configuration, we're going to make it more stable, that's the most important part here, and I'm going to show you what parts are unstable currently. And then we're going to split up our config into many different files. I'm going to explain to you how on earth that even works and how it's going to make our configuration cleaner and tidier. So the first thing we're going to discuss is quite simple. It's actually a problem with our configuration and the problem are these lines over here. But what about them is so wrong? I mean, we're requiring this the lazy plugin and we're running its setup function. We're setting up kanagwa.envim, so what's what's the deal here? Well, I'm not sure if you noticed, in the last episode I enforced a specific order of operations. I think that's the best way of putting it, a very specific order of operations. First we installed lazy, then we explicitly installed kanagwa, and only after that did we add this color scheme bit at the end. And this is why everything works, because kanagwa was already installed. And so running this color scheme command worked, because Kanagwa was already set up and running. But that's not always the case. Imagine you clone your configuration to another machine, and you try running this specific config, you're going to encounter an error. What this boils down to are two different concepts in programming generally. Synchronous execution and asynchronous execution. Synchronous execution is quite simple. We run the file top to bottom, bit by bit and we don't run the next line until the one before it is finished. So every single operation has to finish before we move on to the next line of code. With asynchronous execution, however, this is never guaranteed. This command, for example, just as an example, this command could still be running while we're now executing the next one. What you may or may not have noticed in the last episode is that whenever Lazy installs something, it doesn't block the rest of the editor. You can move your mouse around while it's installing Kanagwa, you can, you know, exit out the window and do something else, and the installation process happens in the background. And this is important, because imagine there are no plugins installed, and you're running on a fresh system. Lazy is going to see Kanagwa isn't installed, and it's going to try and install it, but it's going to do it asynchronously, in the background. And while it's trying to install Kanagwa, the code is going to continue executing, and Neovim is going to try and execute this color scheme command, but Kanagwa isn't installed yet. It's still installing as we're executing code. So you'll actually get an error here, because Kanagwa didn't have enough time to install itself by the time you tried executing this code. Does that make sense? This is what happens when you have things happening in parallel. They have no way of communicating with each other, and you can get weird race conditions like this, where you try setting up a color scheme that isn't even installed yet. However, thankfully, the smart people over at Lazy did figure out a solution to this problem, and it is very, very simple. We're going to now use callbacks. So to understand callbacks, we need to first understand functions. A function in Lua, if you've never done any programming before, is a block of code that doesn't execute automatically. It's a block of code that kind of sits there until another part of the code calls the function. And when the function is called, the contents of the function is only then executed. And a callback is a function. All callbacks are functions, but not every function is a callback. But why do we even need this? Let me show you. The name of this callback that we're interested in, it's aptly called config. So let's go over to this setup call. Currently, we're providing a list of strings. Only strings. That's great if for very simple use cases, but we want to add more metadata to this plugin. So we're going to wrap this plugin around in another table. That's right, more tables, yay. So now we're defining a table of tables, and Lazy is fine with this. You can quit and re-enter, and this is equivalent to what we had before. However, now we can add extra data on the end here specific to this plugin, and we're going to do that. Let me just um, sort this out a little bit. There we go. We are going to now provide that configuration callback. So it's called config. Now I got this from the lazy readme. You go on the lazy readme, there is a header called the plugin spec, and it has everything described there, and config is also in there. So we're going to set config equal to a function, and we also have to end the function using the end keyword. So we have the function keyword, the parameters of the function, which in this case are empty, and then end. 
and anything in between here is not going to be executed automatically. It's only going to be executed after lazy is certain that this plugin is ready to go. So we can take this vim.command.color scheme call, we can delete it, and we can paste it over inside of the function. Quick tip, if you press equal sign twice, it's going to auto indent the current line. And now what's going to happen is if Kanagwa is ready to rock and roll, Lazy is going to call this function and it's going to execute this code. However, if the plugin does not exist, Lazy is going to first install the plugin and only after it's done installing is it going to then call this function. And from now on, whenever we're going to be setting up any sort of plugin, it's always going to be like this because this is much more stable. If the plugin doesn't exist, that's fine. Lazy's just going to install it and then run our configuration code afterwards. But it's always going to be after the plugin itself is ready. So if you save and quit and re-enter, nothing should have changed. And if nothing changed, massive success. It all works exactly like it should have. So let's move on to now the next part. And this is going to be splitting up our config into separate files. Why may you want to do this? I mean, it makes sense to kind of split up your configuration into different files. It just does. Because otherwise you're going to be left with one massive init.lua file, which you're going to have to sift through every time you want to make a change. It's not very nice, especially since configurations can grow very big. Uh, we're talking thousands of lines of Lua code. So it's much better to separate the configuration into a few smaller parts, which we can then build on top of like Lego bricks in our init.lua. So how might we want to split this file? Well, to me, it makes the most sense to split it into two parts. One where we set all of the options and then the other one where we set up lazy. So let's first extract this part. We're going to take this. You want to copy this, obviously. Uh, just running D is going to work because remember we set up clipboard integration. So running D should put it in your clipboard. I'm going to save and quit. And then inside of my .config slash envim, or if you're on another operating system in your configuration directory, you want to create an options.lua file. We're going to paste in the vim.opt calls inside of this file. We're going to save and quit, and we're going to re-enter the init.lua. Now, you'll notice that our line numbers are gone and everything, because NeoVim only executes the init.lua file. It doesn't care about any other files that you might have in your configuration. We need to tell it to now execute the code that's within options.lua. We can do this. We can just execute the require function. We just type options. The same way we have required lazy, we can also require options. Now, the reason this works is the exact same reason why require lazy works with this RTP prepending. It works because by default, our configuration directory is already in the runtime path. We don't have to do any changes. New of him automatically plops our configuration directory in the RTP. And so whenever we run require options, new of him is going to now shout into the void and say, is there anybody who has a file called options.lua that I could execute? The same way it was shouting into the void here. Is there anybody with a file called lazy? And indeed, there was somebody, and that was the lazy plugin. In this case, it's us. We created a file called options.lua, and so we are able to shout back, so to speak, and say, hey, it's me, I have the options.lua file. New of him is going to simply execute that file. And if we save and quit, and we re-enter, here we go, our line numbers are back, and all of our Neo Vim options are set the way we wanted them to be. So next up, let's, oh, whoops, <laughs> dragging the wrong thing. Next up, let's break out this snippet into a different file. Now, what do we name this file? Uh, we could call it plugins, but I think I'm gonna call it lazy. And I'm gonna call it lazy because I want to show you a problem that I encountered when I first made my configuration like three years back. And I spent, I, I remember spending a long time debugging that problem. So we're going to, take this code and we're going to create a new file called lazy and we're going to put this code there. Envim lazy.lua. We're going to paste inside, save and quit. And the same thing that we did with the options, we are going to require lazy. And that makes sense. It should hopefully find our file and then it should set up lazy and everything should work. So let's save and quit and let's re-enter. And what happened here? What, what, what's, what's the matter mate? So what does this mean? And why did this happen? Well, we want to analyze the error first to see, you know, what it's trying to tell us. And it's telling us that the error occurred in the lazy.lua file on line 16. Hmm. This shows us a traceback, right? So the error was detected while processing the init.lua, but it actually happened within the lazy.lua file. In, uh, and it's telling us there's this loop or a previous error. All right, it's telling us something about the lazy module. So maybe, so let's take a look. We're requiring lazy over here. 
And then that's executing this code. And that's setting up lazy. And then it's requiring... Oh, do you see that? It's requiring lazy. But our file is called lazy. Now Lua does this thing called caching. Because it already found the lazy file earlier, it's not going to try looking again. Right? It's not going to duplicate its efforts. Inside of the init.lua, when it did when it performed its first search, it found our lazy.lua file and it remembers where that file now is. So it's not going to shout into the void again saying, hey, is there anybody with a lazy.lua file? No, it, it just remembers now. So it's going to execute this lazy.lua file. And then when we try to require lazy again, it will have remembered, oh, that that's this exact file. And it's going to try and run the file again, which is going to require lazy, which is going to run the file again, which is going to require lazy. And we enter this infinite loop. And Lua catches this prematurely and recognizes, whoa, whoa, what are you doing over here? And simply errors out and says, there was either a loop or some sort of previous error loading this lazy module. And in our case, it was a loop. And you'll see that the line where this occurred is line 16. And that's precisely where we're trying to require lazy all over again. So the way we solve this is instead of calling it lazy.lua, which will cause a conflict and a loop, let's call it um, plugins.lua. Plugins.lua is much more generic, much more simple. And if we go into our init.lua, you will get this error that module lazy is not found because obviously it can't find the lazy module anymore. So we are going to now change this to plugins. And voila, our configuration now works. And you might think that this is the end of the story, that this is where we end it here. However, unfortunately, there is a plot twist. This works, but it only works for now. And let me show you what I mean by this. So my configuration works perfectly right now, but watch what happens to my current working directory. I am in my .config slash nvim, okay? .config slash nvim. But what happens if I move out of config slash nvim. So I'm just going to go into my home directory. And now what will happen is I'm totally not going to get the results I'm expecting. I'm going to run nvim. Oh, what? So my options module can no longer be found. So this is obviously bad news. And this is another trap that a lot of users fall into. So if you had this error beforehand and you were screaming why it's not working, um, I hope you watched until this part of the video. And to understand why this error occurred, we have to yet again look at the runtime path because that's where the problem continuously lays. So I'm going to go back into my .config slash nvim and when I'm in my configuration directory, running new of him works. So what gives? Well, this error is actually, in my opinion, really stupid. And I'm unsure why this is a behavior within NeoVim and within Lua. When you require something, NeoVim is also going to search in your current directory. And that's very weird because if I run this init.lua, we're requiring options and we're requiring plugins. So earlier I said, hey, we're looking through the entire runtime path and our configuration directory is in the runtime path, so it's finding this. And while what I said is true, yet it's not the end of the story. Because if we take a look at the help page for the runtime path, we can scroll down a little bit. We can see there is a list of directories to be searched for these runtime files. And there are many different um, elements that NeoVim is going to look for, but you'll see Lua, Lua plugins. What this is telling us is that NeoVim searches through the whole runtime path, but if it's looking for Lua code, it's not only going to look in our directory, it's going to look in the subdirectory called Lua. So what we need to do is we need to take our files and we need to move them into a subdirectory called Lua. And only then is it going to function no matter where you call NeoVim from. As I say, I'm unsure why this behavior is the default. Like, there is no reason to search the current working directory. At least I can't even think of a reason unless you're doing some very weird prototyping. But that's fine. We're going to fix it and we're going to do it right now. Make directory Lua. And all we're going to do is we're going to move options.lua and plugins.lua into this Lua subdirectory. So now if I display a tree view, of our entire configuration, you'll see that we have the init.lua at the roots, and then we have a Lua subdirectory inside of which we have the options.lua and plugins.lua. And now this is perfectly fine. If I launch new of him, you should see it has no errors. And now if I CD back into the home directory and I run nvim, it no longer has an issue because now our files are objectively in the correct place. But now that we've done that, there are no more tricks, no more plot twists, our configuration is now fully stable. And that's really it for this episode. Just 
cleaning up the configuration, uh, preparing for the stuff that we're going to be doing in the future. Because next episode, we are setting up NVIM Tree Sitter, and that's going to be huge. I'm going to explain everything about how that works and how it completely changes the way we use NeoVim. Our init.lua is looking very clean, and also our configuration is now very stable. It's not going to error if some plugins are missing or not installed. So, hope you enjoyed. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you in the next episode, which is going to be really exciting. Ciao!